The following podcast is brought to you by the Geeks 2 Network, and all opinions are those of the hosts. Listener discretion is advised. It's time to talk wrestling. This is the Dave Dynasty Show. And welcome to the Dave Dynasty Show. I am your host, Dave Dynasty. And I am joined by my producer, who I'm going to give a big introduction to today. How about that? We're going to do things a little differently. What's going on now? Here we go. This is the icon of idiocy, <laughs> the train monkey, the Patrick Monahan man crush. I even have entrance music for you. Are you ready? This is Ike Isaacs. If, if, if I was a wrestler, I would probably come out to the music, honestly. That would be the shortest career ever. Really? Uh, but man. I would like to know how many. If you are out there and you're listening and you're an independent wrestler and you have ever in your life come out to a train song, please let me know. Look me up on Facebook and let me know. I have to know if there, if, if you exist. <laughs> if there's ever been a soul. I'm looking at you, Dale Patrick's. You come out to some weird stuff. You're out there. I was going to say, probably like Dale Patrick's or Ace Perry. I could imagine one of them doing that. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Dave Dynasty Show. What is this? Episode tw- 11. No, no. No, no, no. It's actually episode 12. Oh, because yeah, of because the Mance Warner yeah, six, pack. six Pack. That's right. Yep. That's Which, right. if you have not downloaded and listened to that episode, you are missing out. You are missing out so much, and Mance's wisdom today is so epic, and it was so in-depth. We had to split it into two episodes, so part one today, part one next week. It's something, all right? It is an epic classic. Old, old Manser being all weird and shit. It's, he it's is same. what he is. Yeah, that's, that's true, that's true. As Popeye would say, I am what I am, and that's all that I am. Was he, was he drunk at all in this episode? Or just I've not slightly. fully listened to it, but okay. you know what? I can say yes, even if I haven't listened to it. <laughs> when is Mance Warner not drunk? That is very. That's a fair statement. Fair statement. Good man. Good man. He is a good man. Good man. So, hey, before we get into this, let's hit all the nuts and bolts, all the little things we got to do. Check out our sponsor, LuchaMaskUSA.com. It's not too late. You can get those last-minute gifts. you still got a couple weeks. Hit up LuchaMaskUSA.com. Put in an order. And just, uh, you know what, hit me up. Send them to me. I'll take them. Sounds like I'd, I'd make fun of them for not doing all the Christmas shopping yet, but I've not done all my Christmas shopping yet. So Of course you haven't. Of course you haven't. I've done some. And no, I do not want Train Greatest Hits on CD. Too bad. That's what everybody's getting. I want it on vinyl. In vinyl? You know, I might be able to do that. Uh, I might be able to do that. And be sure to check us out. We are an Amazon affiliate. When you do these last-minute Christmas shopping, go to DaveDynasty.com. Click on the Amazon affiliate link and do your ordering that way. It costs you no extra and helps out the show and keeps it free and helps with our production cost. We appreciate it. Although I told them we need to start charging people because my services are not free, but I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. What what services would that be? Keeping your show running. Nah. I'm the so glue. basically the butt of my jokes? I'm the glue of this show. You've been sniffing glue, apparently. And one more time, we'd like to give a special thanks to Pillow Pal Imagine and Film Rose Film for doing some very cool logo work for us. If you follow us on social media, and you should, you have seen some of those logos. We have been uploading them, including the most recent, the one that I uploaded today, the Bullet Club parody logo. Very cool. Good stuff. We're going to do all kinds of crazy things with those in the future. You might even see a few of those on T-shirts. Who knows? Who knows what we'll do? I'm surprised you actually like said that right this time. Pelopow imagine. You see, unlike you, my learning curve is curved, and I can learn. I am the learning curve. You are, yes. You have not advanced beyond slinging your poo at other people and apparently sleeping with the lead singer of Train. I don't know. That is the extent of your knowledge. (laughs) And, hey, keep in mind, we are very, very soon going to debut our very first original YouTube series, Wrestling and Booze. Me and Ike are going to drink, get the feeling really good. And we're going to watch wrestling. And, uh, yeah, I got a match picked out for our first one. I think we're going to do it soon. I think we might hit it up this week. Which one are we doing? I what what match? You. All right, I will tell you what match. Yeah. We are going to watch a classic world championship wrestling match between the one-man gang and PN News. It is going to be epic. P- 
PN, PN News. You will not want to miss this. I can summarize PN News in three words, and that is yo, baby, yo. Yo, baby, yo. Wait till you see. Don't even watch it. Don't even look okay, up anything I because I want I want you to pop your PN News cherry on Rasslin' and Booze. Okay. Uh, I won't look up anything about him. You, oh, it, it, it doesn't take me much not to do something, so. Of course. Of course not. Path of least resistance. You lay around, lick your wounds, and listen to train. That's all you do with your life. You're a sorry excuse for a monkey. Monkey. Isaiah Ruiz, by the way. Shout out to you again. I didn't get into much of a Twitter battle with you this week because I was busy working, but yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, After yeah. the holidays, maybe. But hey, uh, we got a great interview today. Great interview. Ike did it again this week. Four great for, interview. It's four for four. I think this is the fourth one I've done. Fourth, maybe fifth. I don't know. Four for, uh, Whatever the case may be. I think it might be five, but that's okay. Anyway, I don't know. What does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. But it's a great interview with one half of the Carnies, the Music City Mutt, Carrie Awful. They have officially, as of now, wrapped up all Team IOU obligations. They made their last appearance as Team IOU. They are officially now the Carnies. Right on, right One on. One of the best tag teams in the country. Super cool dude. Yeah. Lots of interesting stuff to hit on that. Great interview. Make sure you listen to that. And, hey, make sure you share it however you are out there. If you see it, listen to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube. Subscribe, follow, like, share. Please go on iTunes and rate and review us. That's how we climb the charts. That's how we become the number one contender for something. I'm sure there's – is there a podcast championship out there? Is there a title belt on iTunes somewhere? There, there's not, but – Then we will be the first. I'm sorry to break your heart, but – I will make it. There is, like, a top 100 chart. Well, then if we are if we happen to get to number one of that, wouldn't we be the champion? I guess. Yeah, I don't know much. if it's going to happen. No, I, I doubt it. Hey – we can be the James Ellsworth of the iTunes. Yeah, right. Rate and review us. Let's make a run. We'll be the ugly little guy <laughs> with the goofy no chin that shakes up the uh, the Jerichos, the Austins, the Rosses, the big names of the world. We'll come out of nowhere. How about that? Randy Orton out of nowhere with an RKO. That's right. So go out there, rate and review us, share us, help us out. It only takes you. You want to give us a Christmas present? There you have it. Help spread the word. All I want for Christmas is for you to like and rate our channels, yeah. See, that you, wasn't that bad. Did you and Patrick Monaghan write that song together? Maybe. It's about train quality. I'm Perhaps. Just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, soul sister. Oh, let's do some headlines. We got some let's stuff to it. talk about, don't we? Let's talk about this stuff. Go ahead. Give me one. Numero uno. Cody Rhodes joins Bullet Club. And I saw his name. He kind of like, like the, what was it, the... Uh, Oh yeah, what was he? He, yeah, he called him something, something else, but it was kind of like a American assassin. Oh, what was it? It was. It was. Give me a second, I'll look it up. Anyway, yeah, this just happened over in the World Tag League. I think one of their shows. Uh, It was kind of suspected when he kind of went heel at Final Battle that it was it was coming, and sure enough, they uh, aired a video, very cool video. Made him, gosh, just New Japan got it together. They super hyped him, made him like a big, big, big deal, which he is. But anyway. Uh, but, yeah, he's officially a member of the Bullet Club. It's the American Nightmare. That's his nickname. The was, American Nightmare. What's his name? The American The American Dream. No, the American Dream was Dusty yeah, Rose's right. dad. And that's what he kind of went by, too. And it's the American Nightmare. That's a very, very cool thing. It's kind of a shot at the WWE. I like it. Yeah, well, Dusty was doing the American. He was doing the American Dream long before WWE. But it was a little shot because, you know, he can't really officially use the Rhodes name. But Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, uh... Cool stuff. He is uh, he's in the Bullet Club. Going to be fun. And it might, 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 might be further proof that maybe Adam Cole, baby, is bound for WWE. He loses the Ring of Honor title. They brought in another big name in the Bullet Club. I got a feeling that we're going to see Adam Cole in NXT very soon. Wouldn't be a bad thing. Would be pretty cool. Time for him to see what he can do one level up. I'm happy. Of course, nothing official there, but... Clearly, he's on the radar, so maybe that'll happen. Maybe he'll be another AJ Styles that come in, comes in during the Royal Rumble. Yeah, I don't know. I think he'll go NXT first. You think so? I don't think they think he has enough name value to, I don't know, straight in, but who knows? Be cool. Maybe. But, you know, whatever. Okay, what's next? What's our next headline? Next headline. WWE signs new talent, including Mickey James and Heidi Lovelace. That's right. Uh, Mickey James had the 
the match uh, with Asuka, and now she's official. She signed a multi-year deal. She's officially with WWE. I don't know where she'll be, what she'll be doing. Uh, I assume she'll be on one of the main rosters, but who knows which yeah. one. Uh, and then they signed, yeah, they signed some indie talent. Um, but the name that jumps out for us is Heidi Loveless, obviously, because she's from Indiana. That's yes. where we're from. Uh, we've seen Heidi a lot out there. Uh, I've talked to Heidi several times. Heidi is a great talent. She's going to be cool. She's going to be great. Congratulations, Heidi. School of Rock graduate. Oh, yeah. Billy School Rock, Rock turns them out right. Uh, so, yeah, good deal. Uh, glad to see a Heidi and all the all of them. Glad to see them all. But, uh, yeah, you know, soft spot in our, part for her, in our heart for Heidi. So, uh, good deal, yeah. And I think uh, the, they signed all this talent. I think they announced four names. Something like that. They were all female. So, I think we are gearing up for that big female tournament. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, I think that's what they're doing, uh, getting there. So, Whatever the case may be, very cool, very good. I'm very excited to see uh, Mary Dobson do some wrestling. Yeah, she's already there. She's uh, she yeah, should, uh, she's Surely will be debuting pretty soon, I would think. Well, she debuted uh, with, what's his name? Uh, at, yeah, she, uh, was, she remember she was in the ring with that one guy. Uh, uh, man, he's wearing a mask. I cannot remember his name now. Uh, he was on NXT. They were in that, they were in that tag tournament. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, Mary Dobson. She was with, uh, I don't remember his name. Uh, but yeah, he's part of the tag tournament, and like I think their name was like, uh, oh shit, like Insanity or I don't know, that's not her. Yeah, that's Mary Dobson. I'm ninety percent sure it is. Ninety percent sure. Ninety. Get getting a little lower now. I, I don't know. I haven't watched NST in a while. I'm a little uh, a little behind. Well, this is a while ago. It was during like the Dusty Rhodes Classic. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, the sanity is a thing there, but uh, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. That's Nikki Cross. That's not. You know, oh, that's is that Mary somebody Dobson. different? Yeah, that's not Mary. Oh, Dobson. I thought it was someone different. I thought that was her. See, My bad. I haven't watched. I still knew more than you. Well, I I was lost for a minute. Yeah, if it's you, not in a train song, you don't know what it's about, oh, do shut you? Up. I also just give me another headline. Really. Just stop. Just saying. John Cena hosts Saturday Night Live. Yeah, that was pretty cool. He was pretty funny. Uh, good stuff. Uh, he got to play a heel thing in a Karate Kid parody. I saw that. So, uh, you know, if WWE won't turn him heel, Saturday Night Live will. But uh, <laughs> but I don't think it's any surprise. You know, we knew Cena had some talent, some range. We know how these wrestlers are. Uh, and the world's starting to see. They, they're they a little they're a wider scope than what people think. They've got these. I mean, because they, they create live TV every week. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they can do this. They, they, they improv. They know what to do. Uh, so it's cool that people are starting to see this, but he was he was funny. He was good good thing, uh, good stuff. I was happy to see it. Uh, it's nice to see somebody that's not named The Rock do something <laughs> like that. So uh, good deal. Congratulations, John Cena. Uh, that, that's all. That's all we got, right? It's all the headlines. It's all the headlines. All right. Well, let's take a little break, and when we come back, we will have the interview with the Music City Mutt, Carry Awful, one half of the Carnies. Stick around. Visit LuchaMaskUSA.com for official high-quality Lucha masks and merchandise, straight from the Luchadors themselves. They have a huge and always growing inventory, so check back often. That's LuchaMaskUSA.com. And welcome to the Dave Downey Show. I am the producer, Ike Isaacs, and today I am joined by one of the members of the tag team known as the Carnies, the Music City Mutt, Carrie Awful. How are we doing today, sir? I'm doing good, Ike. How are you? I am pretty good, actually. Pretty good. Well, of course, thank you for coming on the show. Obviously, we're really excited to have you on here. Oh, that's no problem. I, I, any any chance that I get to to kind of go out there and tell people about myself or my dad, even my best friend Nick, or get to talk wrestling, it's always a good day. And it's always like even a little bit sweeter when it's for like good people like Dave Dynasty. Yeah, you know, uh, Dave's pretty. He's an interesting guy. I don't know. I don't know how to think of him. I do a podcast with him. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey. So obviously, you're a wrestler. If that's not apparent already. So when did yeah. re- when did wrestling hook you? Uh, for me, I, I've told it a couple times before. I was very young, maybe like four or five years old. Um, I was very sick as a child. Uh, you you only see like pictures of those kids who have like tents and breathing masks for nebulizers for for asthma and all kinds of ailments like that. Uh, I was one of those kids. So growing up, I never got the chance to really go out and do things like go out and play ball, 
aging and kind of like not necessarily bedridden, but you're stuck at home, you know. Yeah. And I had a babysitter that had pulled up on a Saturday morning, Owen Hart and Coco Beware's High Energy. And I was hooked from that. And since I lived in Nashville, I got Memphis Wrestling. So I naturally got hooked on that also because they were such a larger than life characters. And I just kind of substituted anything bad that affected me with wrestling or anything good that I wanted that I couldn't have got replaced with the wrestling. And wrestling kind of worked as a uh, uh, an outlet or a metaphor- metaphorical shield, I guess, really, yeah. for all the things that were so, so just not so cool in life and protected me from it. Because whether it was like when my parents got divorced, like, that was like a long and hard and horrible thing. And I just, you know, I had wrestling to go into when friends left because they wanted to go do other things that were maybe not okay for me. I let those friends go because wrestling wouldn't leave, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, you see, you hear a lot of people, they, you know, they talk about, oh, yeah, I watched wrestling as a kid or I watched wrestling when I was an adult. But your your, your story actually has a little more, more heart to it, definitely. And that's, you know, very sorry to hear about that, though. But I'm very glad that, you know, you did no, get hooked that's on okay. wrestling. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it's not... Unfortunately, like, bad things happen to people all the time, you know? Yeah. And I count my blessings that, like, the things that happened to me as a child, I was able to to go past that, you know? Yeah. And wrestling, like, helped do that. And so, like, it made me who I am, and it, and it, and it made me what I am. And so, like, for all that burden or whatever, you know, some people might call it, like, that's a blessing to me, you know? Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Well, so then when you were... Was that kind of like the moment when you were a child? Was that kind of the moment you decided that you wanted to wrestle? Or what moment did you say, I want to be a wrestler? Uh, it was a little I always, I always wanted to be a wrestler, but, like, I was never, like, super physically active. Like, I, th- I played one year of middle school football and was horrible at it. And so, like, in my head, I thought I would be horrible at everything. I played one year of, like, high school lacrosse and was horrible at that. And so, like... Anything like that, I just thought, like, oh, no, even though I want to do it, I'll, I'll never be good at it, so I'm just not going to do it. Uh, the moment I decided to be a wrestler, I was 24, I think, and uh, I, I was dating, well, I was engaged to someone at the time that I'm no longer engaged to, uh, but they wanted to be a tattoo artist, and I wanted to be a professional wrestler, and so we both kind of looked at each other and was like, well, if you can do it, I can do it, and so that's what I did. And then, unfortunately, uh, you know, that, like I said earlier, sometimes bad things happen for no reason or bad things happen to good people, and you can sit there and burden yourself with it, or you can learn and grow from it and, and change for the future. Unfortunately, some uh, very unfavorable circumstances happened to me, and all I had was wrestling, and when I decided to become a wrestler, I decided to jump full into it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I did, and... I, I was very blessed to do that with a uh, former WWE superstar, uh, Memphis wrestling legend, uh, iconic booker of Puerto Rico, Dutch Mantel, commonly known as the Coulter. And yeah. I'd grown up watching him on TV, you know, through Memphis television and then through, you know, Music City Wrestling and, and Nashville, which is a syndicated project or product we had on TV. And I, I got to learn from him, and it was wild and awesome. And I'm still, like, going back on moments I had with him in training to this day that at the time I didn't get. And now, several years later, at different spots in wrestling, I'm like, that's what he meant, or that's how I can use that here. And it's, it's real wild and crazy. Like, a nerdy story I tell everybody. So <laughs> when he was a booker uh, of the local television product when I was a kid, I mean, like, middle school kid, I had AOL and I had AOL Instant Messenger. And he'd put his screen name up for people to buy tickets or ask questions or do advertisements, whatever. And every day after school, I would instant message Dutch. And every day, he'd tell me, like, some zany story because that's just who Dutch is. He's a storyteller. <laughs> Flash forward years later, I saw that he had a re- – I was like – one of those moments was like, you know, come on, universe, give me a sign and I'm supposed to go to wrestling school. And then I saw on a dirt sheet that Dutch was opening up the wrestling school, and I was like, well, shit. Uh, can, I, can I use that kind of language? You, I feel bad. You, you, can, you, you, can say, you can say whatever you want to say. Okay, cool. I just, <laughs> I, you know, sometimes I want to ask just in case. Like, 
And for the podcast I do for Pro Wrestling Ponderings, I have a giant disclaimer that is not suited for children just in case, like, there might be someone listening, you know. But I was like, well, shit, that's a sign. And I, I went to wrestling school. And after all that bad stuff happened with a, a, a poor relationship at the time, uh, you know, everyone here has, like, everyone – so everyone goes through a time in their life where they struggle. And, like, it's not uncommon for wrestlers to be homeless. Like, T.J. Perkins is a prime example of that. Yeah. That had unfortunately happened to me at a point where I was given a choice of uh, not from the ex-girlfriend that I was with at the time, but from uh, some people that I, I I trusted that said, look, man, you need to, to grow up, go to college, and stop play fighting in your underwear or you can't stay here. And I said, to hell with that. This is the only thing I've had since I was a kid. It's the only thing I've had as a young adult, and it's probably going to be the only thing... The only lot in life I'll ever have will be as a wrestler. Because at that point, I was like a despondent punk kid. I had no direction in life. I had no goals. Like, there was no grand scheme of 401Ks, houses, retirements, Social Security. None of that for me. Uh, I I was barely, you know, envisioning my life after the age of 30, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I chose wrestling, and it was amazing. And it was the it, – it, it, it has always been the group thing I ever saw as a child, the, the greatest love I've ever had outside of my fiance and I, but when I devoted myself to wrestling full time, that's when I realized that it was the greatest gift that I ever had received in my life. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. And like you said, you know, every, you know, even though you have tragedy and stuff, there's always something that you can kind of come back to, something that you can kind of base yourself on so you don't kind of, you know, float away, per se. Absolutely. A lot of, uh, one of the things that I subscribe to in my belief systems is being a positive influence or an uplifting voice to a lot of people because I spent a lot of my younger life being negative and being pessimistic. And, you know, some people call it religion. Some people call it karma. I I, I have a hard time labeling anything, other, anything on it other than physics. And the idea is that the more positive of a person you are, the more good things that you put out to the universe that, like, by laws of physics, it has to rebound and come back to you, right? If you have a tennis ball and you're you're mad and you're hateful and you you throw it at a wall and it bounces back, chances are it's going to bounce away from you and you know, like hurt someone or hit someone, or it's going to slam right back to you and hit you in the face. If you take a deep breath, clear your head, throw a ball at a wall, when it comes back to you, you're going to be able to catch it and hold it in your hand as a good throw, right? Yeah. So like positivity and everything else like that is 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 what I try to put out to the world. If I can help someone, I'm going to try to help them, regardless if it helps me, regardless if, if there's any form of fin- financial or monetary gain or merit or whatever, because it's the right thing to do. And all these other guys want to take all these negative things and boo-hoo, my life's bad, and everyone else should suffer like I do. No, man, we all have our crosses to bear. If I can make someone else's life a little less stressful or a little bit easier or a little bit more positive, I'm going to do that. Even on my days when my life sucks, because I have all these wonderful things in it. I have a wonderful wife or soon-to-be wife. I have a wonderful fantasy life in wrestling that has let me go further in the profession than I ever dreamed of. Like I didn't think I'd get through a first match. If you would have asked me 10 years ago or, or 20 years ago when I was a kid, I would have told you it was impossible. So because of, like, such great blessings and things like that, like, it's just amazing. Like, that, that's the kind of positive positivity the world needs. Sorry, I went on a huge tangent on a soapbox, and I didn't mean to. No, I'm no, very no. talkative. And no, hey, that's, we like sometimes that. Sometimes I just kind of go out like that. No, hey, you know, they, you know, I've had people on the show that can I can barely pull words out of. You know, you've spoken more than most people I think I've ever, you know, interviewed before. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but, I mean, well, thank you. Thank you. I try to make it easy for you. <laughs> well, you made it incredibly easy, I, I promise you. But, yeah, no, definitely. I, you know, that's – a lot of people don't realize that, you know, wrestling can be, you know, at times can be difficult or it can be mentally uh, – taxing in a way especially when you have people oh, that don't that don't want to you know support you especially and 
definitely like you're saying the uh, you know you have to have a positive mindset and I think this you know obviously that goes outside of just wrestling it goes in life in general but you definitely think so you know support the people you can mm-hmm. be the positive influence you can but definitely agree and a lot of people don't realize it but you know those people you see in that ring they're real people and they have real wisdom like Carrie awful <laughs> oh well I, I don't know about wisdom I've got a few opinions that might be right or wrong depending on the last but that that's something you just said a sense that I think a lot of people forget that like people inside of the ring are, are real people too man that's something that like I I think a, a lot of people get off put by myself whenever they hear me talk outside of a wrestling ring because they see me and I'm wearing my little dog mask to the ring and I spit on people and I'm vulgar and everything else and I'm normally you know like that dastardly southern heel wrestler or brute. And then they just assume that I'm going to be this, like, giant grundle in real life when really, like, chances are when I'm, like, 60 or 70 years old, I'm going to be the most easygoing grandpa of all time and probably <laughs> a part-time mall Santa, you know? <laughs> You'll be that Walmart greeter that gives everyone, like, stickers and stuff. Hell yeah, because that job sounds fun as hell. All you do is make people smile all day, even when they have bad attitudes. Dude, sign me up. The fact that I can get paid to do that is even more enticing. Exactly. You get paid for that stuff, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry about that. So I'm no, gonna, that's okay. I'm going to jump right back to uh, something I was going to ask you. We were talking about it a little bit. But when you, when you were younger, you said you watched uh, Memphis Wrestling and stuff like that when you were you know, a child. Uh, you know, in... Nowadays, yes. that would kind of be considered, uh, you know, a high a high league uh, indie wrestling type deal. You know, and indie wrestling right now yes. is, you know, is awesome. Uh, you know, as you know, yeah. you know, indie wrestling is incredible. Uh, what, in your opinion, what is the best and worst parts of indie wrestling? Um, so wrestling, the best part of independent wrestling, there's several like huge high points for me, uh, getting to live out a dream that I, I had no right of ever getting to chase in, in getting to wrestle, like, I, I've wrestled Wolfie D and Jamie Dundee and Tracy Smothers and the Rock and Roll Express, like, my inner child would freak out if he met me now, you know what I mean, yeah. knowing that, right, uh, so getting to meet some of these guys and like making real friendships and stuff like that is like super spectacular. Um, also I've made a lot of genuine friendships out of wrestling. Like I said earlier, a lot of, a lot of my friends left when I was in high school because wrestling wasn't cool and they'd rather go out and and do things to make them popular. And I was just not that guy. Like I was comic books, video games, pro wrestling, nerdy stuff, punk music, you know? Uh, to be able to find other people, and I, I don't, I mean, you, I have professional wrestlers, other ones that are, are my best friends, but I have, like, people that I've met through social media that, because of wrestling, I would have never gotten the chance to meet, and then found out that either our lives had paralleled so much, or our interests paralleled so much, that they become, like, best friends to me. Like, one of them is, uh, he's, his name is, is Dylan Hales, but his Twitter handle is Dylan Waco. And we had met because someone had shown me a picture of him tweeting about me versus Jimmy Raven wanting to see it. And then I found out that he'd watched some of my wrestling, and we were at a show, and we started messaging each other. And it turns out, like, he's an old punk rock kid like I am. And we have similar friends, and we, we like similar music. His dad is, like, the world-famous uh, Papa Hills from all those Papa Hills t-shirts you see on, uh, on Evolve and AIW and, and PWX that the boys wear. Yeah. And he's, like, like family to me now. Like, I've stayed at their house, and we talked about when Papa Hales and Dylan helped run punk shows out of a venue because they couldn't find a local spot for, for bands to play. Just, like, cool parts of people's lives like that. And, like, that's an amazing part of indie wrestling, right? Yeah. Uh, going out in front of a crowd and, in like, any form of art or music or entertainment, whatever you want to call it, going out there and performing your shtick, your act, your deal, and people cheering or booing how you, how you need them to dictate for your role in the match, for your role in the story of, of the play or whatever you want to view it, that's such a powerful feeling. It's like going out there and ad-libbing a guitar solo for nine minutes and then getting a standing ovation. So it's like 
even though music's interpretive and they may not like rock and roll or they may like country, but when you're out there, they see it. And even though that's not their preferred, preferred style of wrestling, they're cheering or booing you appropriately because you're just being good at, at, at something you're trying to excel at. Uh, the negatives, okay. So, hands down, the hardest, hardest, hardest thing about professional wrestling is being away from my fiance. There is nothing, because it is physically, like, it's impossible to be in two places at once, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I work a 40-hour-a-week job, and then, you know, some weekends it might be a light weekend, I just work Friday and Saturday, maybe two or three hours away from home. The more the more success and, and, and more places that you, you try to go to to get notoriety, then your week turns into a 40-hour work week where your boss lets you only work Monday through Thursday, but you have to get 40 hours in. He gives you Friday off, so now you're leaving Thursday night. Maybe pick up a town Thursday night, wrestle, drive and all day Friday, drive all day Saturday, wrestle Saturday night, drive all day Sunday, maybe wrestle Sunday night, and then maybe come home at like 3 or 4 in the morning on Monday. You know, I spend more time in my car than I, than I get with my wife, and or soon-to-be wife, I should say, and that's, that's hard, man, especially because at my age, you know, I'm thinking about like what – what do I need to do to, to get to a next level or do, do I look back and say, okay, well, maybe I, maybe it's time for me to slow down and have a kid. But then if I do that, how can I look myself in the mirror when my kid wants to chase a dream and he saw that I gave up on mine? I mean, there's just so many crazy thoughts like that involved in it. And then of course that can lead to like depression or it can lead to, to, to anger or resentment and all these horrible negative things that just consume you. That's the hard thing is the give and take of wrestling. The, I, you know, I, I believe I heard this as a Chris Hero quote once, is that if he could wrestle for free, he would wrestle for free. What he charges for is all the travel he has to do, and that's such a true thing because, like, think about a musician. Like, it's not it's not playing the music or writing the music they hate. It's the having to go and wait inside of a stadium for thirteen hours. It's having to go live in a hotel. It's that side of the wrestling that's hard. And that's something over the last year, uh, my tag partner Nick and I have, have seen, you know, firsthand. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. four days a week, more weeks than not, you know. And, and these aren't, like, easy trips where it's, like, from, for me, an easy trip is anything that's five hours or less at this point. <laughs> because they're, like, one weekend we went from Tennessee to, to Eobor, Florida, to Brooklyn, New York. That was a weekend. One weekend we did from Tennessee to, I think, Indiana to, to Charlotte, North Carolina to Ontario, Canada. That was a weekend. And that's kind of like the regular deal now. And these guys, like, we're getting enough to where we're coming home with money. You know, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm very blessed to not be in a spot where I'm losing money and I'm, I'm, I'm actually paying some of my bills around my house with wrestling. A cable bill here, an electric bill there. You know, maybe a nice dinner for me and my fiance. You know, every so often, all coming from wrestling. But we're not at the spot where it's like, "Hey, we got you plane tickets. Don't worry about it. It'll be quick in and out." Uh, we got a hotel room for the first time the other day, and Nick and I kind of like cried. You know, because that's one less expense that we had to pay. We could sleep over that night. And we could take a hot shower. And that was just like so awesome to us. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, you know, people don't realize that, too, is that, you know, when you're in this business, it's like, it's constant go, go, go. You know, you're not, you know, you don't really stop to sleep sometimes. You just have to keep going overnight. And it's it doesn't matter, you know, how tired you are. You know that you have to make it to that next venue as quickly as possible because you, know, you need to be there. But definitely. But you but you talked about, it, you know, go ahead, actually. Well, well I was going to say, and that's, that's the killer thing because, like, I, you hear about these guys who, are, who get really frustrated. And they're like, well, it's like, well, why do you call out of shows? Why do you not, you know, take the risk to go somewhere new? Why do you stay stagnant? You've got to grow. You've got to, you've got nothing. I don't know if you've ever watched the anime, like Full Metal Alchemist, but there's like this, that, that role of equivalent exchange, you know, something yeah. must be sacrificed of equal or greater value. Yeah, yeah. And that's wrestling to a T. There is no man who's made it in wrestling that hasn't either sold part of their soul or part of their life away to get somewhere. And that's it. That's the sacrifice, man. And wrestling doesn't know any of us anything, you know? And a lot of these guys feel so entitled, and it's like, no, nah, man. It, it's all about giving to others. It's all about giving of yourself, losing out a part of, 
of, of your life where there's birthdays and Christmases or Valentine's Days or or even something of, you know, 12 hours in a corner. There's a lot of things I'd rather do than, than sit in a car for 12 hours. But I'm lucky enough to be able to do it with my best friend, Nick, and, and we get to goof off and listen to music and podcasts and talk philosophy. Philosophy, I got tongue-tied, and, and, and wrestling culture and all this other cool stuff. So it makes it a little bit easier, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, and I, first of all, I want to say I think it's really cool that you just uh, put a Full Metal Alchemist quote, you know, in a, oh, in a wrestling you. podcast. Uh, huge, huge, an- I'm a nerd too, so I'm a huge anime manga fan as well. So besides that, uh, <laughs> you were you were talking about uh, earlier, you were talking about, you know, how, how am I, you know, I'm thinking, you're th- thinking about having a kid, you're thinking about, well, do I need to step it up to the next level, you know, what's my next steps? But you tried to step into the next level, and you attended a Ring of Honor trial camp. I did. I did. Uh, that How was, was that? One of the, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in professional wrestling. Uh, I've, the only thing I can really say about it is, because, like, I don't know how much, like, we obviously, like, it's not like Nick and I have been on their TV or gotten signed. But we've got some critiques that are very, very minor in, in what we do. Like, we had tons of positive, awesome feedback from guys like, guys who were like, but I used to see, I used to go to TNA at the Asylum in Nashville when they were doing the weekly pay-per-views. Yeah. I was in high school, and I just, like, looked at these guys and thought, God damn it, if I could just live their life for one moment. And now I'm in front of those guys, and they're saying, hey, you did this good, and this is really cool. And and the dynamic between y'all is this, and I, there's possibilities for that. And you're like, it's, I, honestly, like it was the most surreal and beautiful moment. It, if I never got to wrestle again after that moment, I would have been okay. That, that would have been the end of the big Hollywood movie. I would have found myself worth from that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the critiques that they did give us are awesome, and it's crazy because we've already started implementing them. Uh, as a lot of people know, we used to be known as Team IOU, and that was from an inside joke from where Nick and I were singles, locals guys, and we feuded with each other. And then we became Team IOU, the boy and his dog, and then we evolved from that to Team IOU, the, the plucky white meat baby faces, and then we evolved to that into the carnies, Team IOU. And now we're just the carnies. And we're diving deeper into these like weird character studies to figure out like what we what to take what we have and to make it even better than what it is. Yeah. And there's a couple other things that that we we put a little things out here and there. Uh, 2017 is going to be like a real crazy year for us, just because we've been lucky to keep our schedule full. There's a lot of people from a lot of places that are looking at us and talking about us, and and that's the next step, right? Whether it's for me, the next step was figuring out, like, how do I get on these guys' radar for your Ring of Honors or your Evolves or your, your Global Forces or your TNAs or your WWEs. And Nick and I don't ever feel like we're anybody. Nick and I are always going to be the two guys that we're the only Southern wrestlers that really go out and take pride in being Southern wrestlers no matter what city, state, or country we're in. But we're not – we're – I'm trying to think of the right way to say it. We're still just the two guys from Tennessee that are chasing after something to see if we can get it. And then when we found out that people from different places do know who we are, and they, they do see our videos, and they do see the DVDs and the highlight videos, and there are people asking questions. It's really scary, right? Yeah. But the cool thing is, is like, if you're trying to chase a dream, right? And let's say your dream job is to be a, a, a baseball player, right? You try out for the Yankees. And the head coach looks at you, and he's looking at you hit these balls, and you hit four out of five balls. It's a pretty good ratio, right? Well, yeah. If he tells you, if he tells you to drop your bat just a little bit lower, you'll hit five out of five. Okay. To me, that's a no brainer. I'm going to drop my bat and hit that five out of five times. Yeah, definitely. You know, and so that's kind of like the process that Nick and I are in now is where we 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 are we are somewhere above the curve from where we were a couple years ago 
and now we're trying to figure out how to be undeniable. And the cool thing about it is, is now that there's a little bit of buzz or hype or whatever you want to call it, and some of these places, like, are coming and, and paying to bring us in. Uh, we just debuted for AIW. Like, that was a huge check in our in our, in our our list of places we wanted to go last year. Uh, and we did really well in their tag team tournament. Uh, got to main event and FIP pay-per-view. That's another check mark. Got to go over to PWX a few times. That's another check mark. Uh, went to Canada for the first time for Alpha One. That's check mark. So the next step is always building building those next check marks, right? Yeah. Daniel Bryan had a quote about how he has only goal was to have one match, and then it was to be like on local TV, and then it was to be in a different state, and then it was to be in a different region, and then it was to be in one of the big companies, then it was to be the world champion of the big companies, then it was WWE, then it was world champion WWE, and that's that's a process I completely understand because no matter how far I get, all it does is unlock a next level of check marks in my in my mental my mental list of things I have to get done yeah absolutely well you know definitely you know that's something i think a lot of people uh a lot of people i think fail to do is that they try and they either aim too high or i think they aim too low and i think that not necessarily that you can't aim high but i think sometimes you have to be able to build up to that you have to have like you said you have to have a check you have to have a checklist in your brain before you can complete another checklist you know what i mean like you're saying it's it's, oh, it's, it's, it's a process basically well, and that's, and that's, to me, like, there, there are always going to be exceptions to the rules, right? There's going to yeah. be some football, basketball, some Olympus, or Olympus, Olympics uh, athlete who, by all rights, is so physically talented and gifted, but they're going to get spots places, and that's good for them. Like, I can't play rate on somebody for, for having a come up. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I always admired the guys who I dreamed of being on the Indies. Guys who I used to have to download on 56K modems just to see <laughs> videos of them on the internet when I was a kid. And even before that, guys who I'd only known through pictures of magazines from PWIs, people like Reckless Youth, guys that did the grind, you know, like guys who were like indie things. Like if I was a, if I were to chase my dream or if I was to book my dream, it would be exactly how I'm doing it now. A guy who went out there and grinded the indies, no city too far, no match too scary, all that stuff that I put out on, on social media is 100% like how I feel about it because I want to be like the guys like Punk and Brian of, of that era of guys or the era before that or the era before that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Guys who were journeymen who, who put the work in, who had the resume, who people were like, yeah, maybe that guy is not in WWE, but, like, look at his body of work, you know? Just because, like, just because a band's not, like, a, a mainstream artist that's signed to Warner Brothers doesn't mean that they're still not an audience for him. Like, look at punk bands who have sold hundreds of thousands of albums by doing it by themselves the right way, by putting their nose to the grindstone, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's, like, my mentality of it. Definitely, definitely. I think that's a... I think it's a good mentality to have because you want to work off of your own work. You don't want to, you know, just jut off into nothing. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, yeah. Could you imagine, like, if, what if, so let's say, like, you learn how to drive and your dream is to be a NASCAR, like, a NASCAR race driver or whatever, right? Well, that's a great dream to have. And if you have the natural ability to do that, that's awesome. I know that if I was 16 with my driver's license and I said I wanted to be a NASCAR driver, and they just put me in that car, I would wreck that thing immediately <laughs> and probably kill myself. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, I, I do want to jump back just a little bit here. You know, you were talking about how you went from uh, Team IOU to the Team Carnies, and you were talking about all that. And, you know, I think I think sometimes people uh, have issues rebranding and tweaking their image. Yeah. And if I'm honest with you, it, it seems like it was almost a pretty flawless and seamless transition to me from the outside perspective. Uh, but to thank you, thank you. But definitely, yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, I literally one day I, I remember I can't remember I was talking to Dave Dynasty actually, and he, he's like, "Yeah, you remember that team uh, team IOU from uh, we he was at a merch show one time and he told me you guys faced." I'm yeah. like, "I was like, yeah, yeah." I said, "Didn't they just change their name?" And he's like, how did you know? I yep. said, I don't really know. I thought I'd just seen it somewhere. So it was like, I just knew, you know. It wasn't It wasn't, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like, hey, you know, they just changed their name to something crazy and I don't know who they are. But 
from your yeah, guys' Yeah, that was, that was definitely by design, you know. <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. No, I was say, but, like, from your guys' perspective, was it seamless? Was any, there any difficulties? What was it like to kind of, like, make that transition, you know? Uh, so, we had uh, the word corny. So, quick wrestling history lesson, right? <laughs> uh, wrestling started in the carnivals, right? Like, that was the first idea of, like, professional wrestling of what it would evolve to its roots were in the, in, in the carnivals over in England and Europe. And then stateside, it became more organized into the professional wrestling of what it is now, right? Yeah. Uh, corny, corny was a, a term for people that went back and forth, you know? Like, they traveled with the carnivals, city to city, town by town. Uh, in America, uh, carny, like, in modern era times, uh, calling someone a carny is a very derogatory term for slime ball or skis ball in southern wrestling yeah and being that we're both from tennessee and traveling so much people assumed that we would only wrestle a straight memphis style that we couldn't go hold for hold or move for move or strike for strike or sprint for sprint and they would just say oh they're just corny and i don't need to watch their match i know it's going to be bad it's a very derogatory term but we're proud of who we are and where we're from and everything else and so uh american horror story a couple seasons ago was based out of the carnival yeah, absolutely. And that's where we merged, like, Nick, instead of being the little boy, became the uh, uh, arrogant, uh, pompous dandy character based off dandy. Yeah. And I evolved the dog from the dog in, into what it is now to be almost like a reflection of Twisty. That's why I have to go over his face. Yeah. So we took a pop culture reference, a insider derogatory wrestling term for us, and we just embraced it, you know? Like, we were like, fuck it, if you're going to call us that, we're going to be that. And, you know, the people who know us know that we're going to be awesome, sweet dudes, and your misconceptions is going to be what we represent. That's what we did, and, and it was crazy because, like, we started telling a couple people, like, hey, these guys said this about us, put it on commentary. And it popped off. People liked it, you know? And then all these people started putting their spin on it because it was based off American Horror Story and that, that term – but then it was, you know, the last of the, of the cornies, they take it to their roots, city by city, town by town, envelope by envelope, t-shirt sale by t-shirt sale, it doesn't matter to them. And it kind of became a, an ideology and philosophy for us. So when I had people announce us, it wouldn't just be Nick Iggy and Kerry Oval, Team IOU, it was the cornies, Team IOU. And so that was like the soft serve for it, right, the little softball pitch. Yeah. Um, when we did that, well... Without saying too much, one of the things that people told us that they would like for us to do is when they looked at us, they saw the Carnies. They didn't see Team IOU anymore, and we needed to figure out how we could brand ourselves that nationally. And so what I did is I messaged Dave Christ from Ohio List for Killers because I knew that him and Jake had to go through that same transition from Irish Airborne into that. Uh, I respect Dave a lot. Like That is my dream match for me and Nick is Nick and I versus him and his brother Jake. Yeah. That is the number one priority match for me. Like, I've tried for the last two years. And uh, I believe 2017, the way it's looking, might be the year finally. Thankful, uh, thankfully, to a couple of bookers who have the foresight to book it so we can sell a buttload of DVDs to people. <laughs> and Dave's been, like, super helpful. Like, I don't I don't try to ever message him too much because I don't want to bother him because I know he's busy, but he's always super kind and super helpful. And I said, Dave, like... I, I think so highly of you, like, and I know you know this, like, this is what people have told us, and we want to get a job, so what do we do? And he goes, this is what you do, and I followed it. And then one day I just changed all of our social media from Team IOU to the Cornies, and some people looked at it, and some people didn't, and then people started asking questions, and I said, we're going to make an announcement, and I let that breathe out for a week, so people would talk, get a buzz, and uh interest in it and so people would be tweeting us and messaging us and instagramming us hey what's the deal what's the deal what's the deal and so i made an announcement and uh we screen captured it so we could put it on instagram and twitter too and on facebook and everybody just started sharing it and then it was just like we'd been the carnies all along and, and people forgot about team iu like they were two different people which is wild right like yeah. that's crazy but yeah definitely i mean like like i said you know that's that seems pretty seamless. Like, you know, that was, that's, you know, genius. To be quite honest, you know, that's like, nobody saw it coming, but then it's just like, boom, and everyone's like, okay, they're the carnies. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is, like, some people are like, oh, well, I wouldn't change the gimmick. Dude, look at guys like Triple H and how many times he had to change and evolve his gimmick. Look at Stone Cold and how many times he had to change his gimmick. The Rock, how many times he had to change his gimmick. If that's good enough for those multimillionaires, I think it's A-O fucking K for me to change it, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, if Stone Cold didn't, you know, change, you know, what was it, the Ringmaster, right? Yeah. So, I mean, Before he, that, it was Stunning Steve. And I mean, what if he was still Stunning a, Steve? <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? That would be, be insane. So, I mean, the wrestling would not have been what it was or became if that would have never happened. Exactly. So fuck it. Like, I think the car needs to better anyway. And it's better bookings and it's getting us more money and <laughs> talk to new people and make new friends even. So, like, how could that possibly be bad, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, tag, you know, you, we've been talking a lot about, you know, uh, you, you as a person, but then also you and uh, <laughs> you and being a part of the Carnies and all of that, mm-hmm. you know, and you and Nick Iggy, like you said, are really good friends, and you guys have been tagging and yes. whatnot. But also, you team with another guy sometimes. You team with Trip, yes. You team with Trip Cassidy. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've known Trip for many years, and I love Trip to death. Absolutely, absolutely, and. Uh, he was actually on the show, and he actually talked about it a little bit. He talked about it just a tiny bit. But I, you know, we would discuss with him how he was kind of just like, it seemed like a natural mm-hmm. fit to kind of like jump in with you guys. You know, it looked, it was pretty fluid, you know. And, uh, you know, I was just curious, you know, how did you, how did you guys meet Trip? How did that work out? I met Trip years ago at IWA Mid-South. Uh, my first night in there, we were in a scramble together. But I'd seen his work on the internet and vice versa, and and we became buddies. Uh, a while ago, AW did a tryout show, and Trip came down, and I really wanted some stuff to uh, to happen for him. And I I told him some opinions about some stuff to do in his match that might help him, and he killed it because Trip's an amazing wrestler. And then AWE put us together. Because I was talking, you know, like every now and then, I, like Nick and I would talk, like, wouldn't it be so badass if Trip was with us? Like, he's such a good dude, and he's so good. Like, he needs a, a chance to shine. And an opportunity came up, and that's what happened. And Trip, Trip fits so well into our puzzle because Nick and I are attacking through and through. We always will be. Uh, Trip has always had to been, like, sec- not necessarily, like, second banana. But, like, Tripp's always been in, like, support roles, and no one's really trusted him to, to give him a ball to run with it. And with Tripp and us, like, I told Tripp, I was like, hey, man, the stuff we're doing in Atlanta is amazing. We could do this a lot of other places. And, like, for, to me, I, Nick and I can be Team Angle, and you can be Kurt for once, you know? Like, yeah. we'll be your support. You be the guy who gets the ball and runs with it. Because you're good enough to, to do that with a story. You're good enough to carry it in the ring. And we'll, we'll just do it. And that's what happened, you know. And, and these places started contacting us. And we've done a few. I think we've done two or three six-mans uh, at a, a multitude of different places. Uh, Nova Pro, there was a five-on-five match that Nick couldn't get off for his job. So I was like, hey, man, I really don't want to come up here by myself. Like, what about me and Trip? And they were like, oh, dude, we love Trip Cassidy. Absolutely. And so we did that. And it's cool because if there's ever, like, an emergency where something happens at home where I can't go, whether it's, like, a death or something like that, Tripp's able to stand in there for me. Or if there's something where Nick can't go, Tripp can stand in for him. Or if there's something that we can do to to help elevate Tripp and get more eyes on Tripp, you know, because of the grind that we've had, we're now able to to help that out. And people can finally see the greatness that is Tripp Cassie that we've known all along, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, like you said, I've seen him wrestle uh, quite a few times, actually. And, you know, I've never seen you guys triple before. But now it makes me want to look because he just, you know, like, you know, him and Dave talked a bunch. And, you know, and like, you know, I've thought about it. And I'm like, that sounds like something he would do. It sounds like something you guys could all do together. So definitely I'm going to have to look up that up now because it just sounds incredible. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Like, it's so ridiculous because, so... 
Nick's character is so different from Trip and mine because tri- even though even though Trip is like some of the best elements of Nick and some of the best elements of me, but mixed into one person where Nick and I are separated. Yeah. So like where Nick doesn't spit or get his hands dirty or bleed, well, like I do. You know, Trip does that, but Trip's also very sly and cunning. Where I'm, I'm just kind of all over the place, which is more like Nick's speech, you know. Yeah. So it's like it's this weird thing where we'll flow into something where Trip does something nasty and I do something nasty, and then Nick will come in and do something very sly and cunning and take advantage of a situation, and then Trip comes in and does something sly and cunning but brings it back to being disgusting, and then I go in there and be abrasive and disgusting, and so it just like. It helps with the flow of the match in such a like a subversive way that we couldn't do if it was just the two of us. It's just like uh, it's like getting to paint a picture instead of just having the colors red and blue. Now we have red, blue, and green. Or what's it? Where the primary colors red, blue, and yellow. Now we have red, blue, and yeah. yellow, so we can make all these different colors together. Yeah, I was like, what are the primary colors? I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. It was a struggle. <laughs> well. <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, definitely, you know, and you know, like you said, you know, now you can make a multitude of colors. You guys can mix up there and that's great. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, you were you actually mentioned this earlier and uh but you're talking about you having a podcast of your own. I think yeah. you mentioned it very briefly. Now, we now as we were talking, I was thinking about that and I was like, you know, I want to hear about this because from just our conversation, you are a you are Pandora's box. You've got so much. Yeah, on the I, just, I never. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, once you get me going, I never shut up. That's that that is true. I uh, yeah, I am. I do have a lot on the inside, and uh, I'm I'm super analytical, and so doing that podcast has actually kind of helped because I instead of just like internalizing stuff and having my thoughts all over the place, I get to kind of like vent and talk things out and, and, and weird stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. You can kind of organize those thoughts into uh, segments and you can organize it into, you know, talking about this right. or that, you know? Definitely. <laughs> so what so, what, can, what can people expect from this podcast? Um, well, it's, it's a couple of different things. Originally it was going to be just about Southern wrestling, but and misconceptions that people have and maybe people getting eyes on Southern wrestlers that they, they would have never gotten the chance to see otherwise. And then it kind of just became about the adventure through wrestling that I have and different things. Like I did interviews with my, with my buddies, uh, Stutzy and, uh, and, uh, the, everyone calls him the boy. It's the agent, Mike, the guy that, uh, yeah. runs and owns Nova pro. Yeah. Him and Stutzy, like, that's he it helps him with that, and he's also the booker for CWF Mid Atlantic, right? Okay. So, like, I had a discussion with them about what they do to market to their business and what they do to market to their fans, and what their goals in it are, and, and how they're doing it, and, and and how they're building compelling storytelling, which is a heavy influence of Southern wrestlers. And then the next week, it was me and Nick Manawa from IW Mental catching up. We hadn't seen in a few years and me getting to meet his kid for the first time since he's had his child and talking about what's going on at on at IWA and sharing stories and little stuff. Yeah. The episode that's going up this week is actually with my fiancé on it, and I'm, like, normally super protective about my personal life, but, like, I think there's a lot of people who don't understand, like, the stress of, like, a relationship with professional wrestling. So I had people tweet me about it uh, when I was doing, like, what do you want me to talk about? Someone said, how you and your fiance make it work with you gone all the time. And I was like, brother, she can talk for hours about this. Absolutely. <laughs> and so it's just kind of that. And like my, my life as a guy from Tennessee trying to make it in wrestling and the people that I know and meet and I, I care for and call friends and, and their thoughts and their emotions and their goals and how we all fit together in this like weird hodgepodge of, of, a real networking that is professional wrestling. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. If you want to listen to it, it's on Pro Wrestling Ponderings on iTunes. Definitely. Well, so I think we're at, we'll, with our podcast, we'll definitely plug that because I think that would be good for some people. I think they need some wisdom from 
very awful because I definitely have benefited from this conversation. <laughs> it's a lot of wisdom, well, thank man. A, you. Lot, a lot of wisdom. And, you know, like I say, a lot of people don't see that side of wrestlers, but you definitely, a lot of wisdom coming from you. And I like it. I like it. Well, I hate to cut you short, but I'm actually getting Iggy to, for my, my soon to be wife that dinner's ready and I've got to go eat. Oh, so that before is I go, do you mind if I plug a couple of things before I go? I was actually going to recommend that. Where can people find you on social media and everything else? You can find me all across the board on social media at Terry Awful. That is going to be at sign K E double R Y A W F U L. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Facebook's almost nothing but wrestling. Twitter is me just normally kind of doing like random stream of thoughts talking about wrestling. Instagram's a little bit more about my real life and, and what I am doing in the day to day and a little bit less carry awful and a little bit more uh, carry the human being. But I'm always on there. I'm always down to talk to people for direct messages, follows, tweets, shares, whatever. If you want to tell me about your favorite X-Men, go ahead because I'm going to respond with my favorite X-Men of all time is Archangel. Uh, and that's the easiest way. You can find our group page on Twitter at, at the Carney's TN because the Carney is mistaken. Or on our Facebook fan page, also just the Carnies. Everyone follow us on all of that good stuff to stay up to date on bookings, promos, matches, shenanigans, podcasts, and anything else you can want because it's the age of social media and that's what we have this for. So we give you entertainment on any form that you could ever want and you can follow our lives. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com backslash, they might have changed it to the Carnies. It might still be Team IOU. Either way, you should go find out for yourself. We just dropped our new T-shirt that is based off a design of a tour poster that we saw done by the famous at James Vanderbeek T-shirt design. Extraordinaire. Death to False Tag Teams T-shirt is up there by the hand of Force Destroyer. It's got little baby versions of me and Nick as Grim Reapers with balloons in our hands. And, of course, wonderful sponsor, Fully Gimmicked. Over at FullyGimmicked.com, you can get any of your classic team IOU merchandise or some of the soon-to-be-released Fully Gimmick exclusive t-shirts. And that is a mouthful, my friend. I, I am <laughs> I am tired. I am done. <laughs> well, absolutely, man. All right, well, hey, you thanks. You know I've done it before, right? Yeah, I definitely can tell. I feel like you've practiced out like, <laughs> in the mirror, probably. <laughs> absolutely, man. Well, right. hey, thank you for having me on. I had fun. Sorry if I got long-winded. But maybe next time I'll have you on my podcast, right? Absolutely. And it'll hey. be about you podcasting people out and, and talking to all these guys and helping them get exposure and all that other cool stuff. Because yeah, that's part of wrestling, too, man. It's all it's all this great circle, man. Absolutely, dude. Hey, well, thank you so much. And, yeah, definitely, me and Dave will definitely come on your podcast. Definitely. I'll t- I probably have to drag his ass along because he, he thinks this is his show or <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> from, from some of the episodes I've listened to, he gives you a little bit of a hard time. You better be, if he's not careful, you might just usur- usurp his throne. It may not be the Dave Dynasty show anymore. It might, yeah, he, might exactly. be, he might be featured endeavored from his own deal. Might be the trained monkey show eventually. That's what they call me. God bless. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, thanks so much. You go enjoy your dinner. Uh, everybody follow Carrie right. Awful on everything. Follow him. Follow the Carnies. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, man. Bye. You too, man. See ya. Check out Geek Stew for all your geek and wrestling news and podcasts. Visit geek-stew.com. Gather around for life lessons from professional wrestling's own, Mance Warner. It's Warner Wisdom. All right, people, here we go. We're live, baby. We're live right here. Another edition coming from me to you. Mance Warner right here, king of big dog style. Larry Light Beer, the king of the trailer court. Your favorite wrestler of mine, me. Right here on Warner's Wisdom, people. This is a Dave Dynasty show. This is where I give all the knowledge to you people. You kiddies, you adults, greenies, greenhorns, ladies, anyone in between, man. I'm spitting knowledge out here, dropping knowledge, man. I know a little something for y'all, man. I know a little bit of something that I could give y'all a little bit of knowledge, a little grain, a little something you could take on with you down the road. Now. Nah. As I sit here recording this here, give me a second so I can, I'm parched. I'm going to have to get me one of these beautiful light beers. Let me 
say this once again for y'all people out there. Anybody want to send me some light beer, I will drink it. I will talk about it. I'll put you all over on the internet, on the boards, out here for the wrestling fans, for the, the podcast fans, anybody out there. Y'all making some light beer, send it on over to me. I'll drink it up. I'll put you over. Now, on this week, this edition, I believe this is episode 11 right here. It's going to be a little different as I sit here and relax and tell y'all a little story. And partake in some of these tasty light beers. This week, I'm going to tell y'all, I, I know what y'all going to think. I'm crazy. I'm a crazy person. I've seen it. We're going to go over the topic of aliens. I have seen them. I will tell y'all about this throughout this edition right here. I have done battle with the creatures up in the sky. So, bear with me here while I go through this story. An encounter with the aliens as I drink my light beer, as I talk to y'all on the podcast, as y'all are listening to this right here. The best thing going, baby. All right. This all began as I'm driving out in the country in my beautiful truck. I'm driving. It is a summertime. Let me paint this for y'all. It's a summertime. It's cool outside. It's nice. Riding in my truck. Probably got me a nice light beer. When I see a light up in the sky. It blinds me. Old man sir is blind at this point. I can't see nothing. My radio starts messing up. Listening to some sweet tunes on the radio. I believe I was listening to Faith No More. Mixing there with a little bit of whoever did that. Friday the 13th Part 3. That, that weird disco remix. Truck dies. I'm out in the country, middle of a road. I'm pissed. I'm hot now. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to rock and roll, baby. I get out of my truck. I see a light up in the sky, blinding me. Can't see nothing. All of a sudden, I'm out. My feet are leaving the ground. I don't know what's happening. I can't do nothing. And after, at that very moment, I thought, Oh, kid got me. Thought Walkman got me with a gimmick. Dropped me one in my drink to mess with me. Because I got him and he going to get me back. Now, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, oh, kid got me again. Jesus Christ Almighty. But no. Soon the story unfolds even more people. Now I come to. I'm on some sort of a, a spacecraft. Well, at the time I'm thinking... I've been hit with a goodie bar and I've woke up and I'm probably going to be missing a kidney or something. I've done a few things, people. This I, At this point, I ain't too scared. I'm a little angry, but I ain't too scared. Now, nah. this story, it's going to take a little bit, people. I, you know, I get sidetracked. I start talking, especially drinking all these light beers here. Now, nah. I come to in a dark room, it's wet, it's cold, the mancer's hot, fired up. I start looking around, there ain't nobody in there, man. It's just a one big, wet, cold room. I ain't got my fanny pack. I ain't got no light beers. I ain't got no goodies on me. I'm starting to come down. I'm ready to rock and roll, man. I'm getting hot and fired up. I'm looking around. I'm investigating. Where am I going to go? What am I going to do right now at this point? Start looking at the walls. The walls are strange. The floor is strange. The ceiling's strange. And I don't mean strange like back when I was down there in Tijuana. And I'd go in the hotel room and there'd be all kind of, good Lord Almighty, the things I saw in them hotel rooms. I ain't going, I'm trying not to get sidetracked here. I ain't talking strange like that. I'm talking about... 
There's something weird going on up in here. There ain't nobody else in there. It's this old man, sir. I'm looking around. I'm starting to sweat bullets at this point. I make my way to a door. There's just all kinds of weird buttons and handprints and good Lord might I don't know what I'm going to do. I start hitting it. Tapping away, punching away. Ain't nothing working, man. I don't know what to do at this point. So I think, I go, oh man, sir, what are we going to do now, baby guy here? And then I have what one would say is a, is a light goes off. I rear back with all my might. Whack I do. I give one fierce headbutt to this weird sign on the wall. It opens up, baby. I'm out there. I'm out of the room now. I make my way out into the hallway. I'm looking around. Walk up and down. I'm pacing around. I ain't seeing nobody. And then all of a sudden, a noise, high-pitched squealing. Couldn't tell if someone was screaming. Someone was getting beat down. An animal. I got no idea at this point. I'm freaking out. I hear it. I drop to my knees, cover my ears. I look up across from where I just came out of. There's an old Asian man. Got long hair, bald on top of his head. He got a big old beard. He looking right at me. Ain't nothing bothering him at all. He cool as a cucumber, man. Cool as a fan. Cool as the other side of a pillow. Ain't nothing wrong with him. So I try to get him out. So naturally, I got to jump up. Still got my ears covered. Feel like my ears going to explode. I'm going to start bleeding out my nose and not from the goodies. I rear back once again. Oh, I can do. I headbutt that other little little encryption sign. Whew, opens up. Here come the Asian man. I'm trying to talk to him. He ain't understand what I'm saying. And I've been to Asia before, baby. I've been over there. The little Asian man he couldn't hear. He couldn't, he couldn't hear nothing. The man was deaf. So the noise that went off didn't bother him at all. It bothered me. I'm hot already because I, I can't party right now. I was having a good time driving out in the country. Here I am, me and the Asian man. We're in the hallway. I know what's going on. I've seen the lights in the sky before, baby. We're on a UFO. Out here with the alien men. They done picked us up. Nah, me and the Asian man. I'm trying to talk to him. He don't know what I'm saying. It's like I'm on another tour over there wrestling. No one knows what I'm saying. I'm just walking around. People pointing at me, taking pictures. Because I'm drunk as a skunk in the streets. Nah. We make our way down the hallway. We still ain't seen no aliens yet, people. The anticipation between me and the Asian man, we're freaking out at this point. Well, he ain't really too freaked out. You can't hear nothing. But you can tell in his eyes, man. He was ready to rock and roll just like I was. To be continued. And welcome back to the Dave Dynasty Show. Woo! We got to decompress now. Yeah, for real. Like, that was some weird shit some going on. in-depth stuff with uh, Carrie Awful. Follow that up with some in-depth weird stuff. Yeah, honestly. From like, Mance Warner. That was, some, that was weird. Odd. I think his light beer might be bad. Oh, uh, it might be poison. That's what happens, ladies and gentlemen, with light beer. That's what happens. <laughs> you drink light beer, you get crazy. So anyway, wow, that was... Wow, that was a one-two punch there. I mean, the Carrie Offal interview, great. Man Warner thing was weird, but oddly good. I don't know. Pretty in-depth. I, I guess. I, I feel like I got to make some kind of joke about you just to lighten the mood, but there, I don't know if I can come up with one. I know. I'm just like, I'm, I, I, ah. I, but hey, okay, I believe. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's, why don't we just wrap this then? Let's wrap it's it. It's pretty in-depth. So anyway, uh, yeah, check us out. Go oh. to DaveDynasty. Yeah, you don't not, do Not that. that rap? Okay. No, 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 no. no. Your, your, your trained boyfriend will be disappointed in you. Uh, so hit us up, DaveDynasty.com. Uh, all the links to our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And then uh, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Like we say, we will be debuting Wrestling and Booze, hopefully this week, very soon. Uh, and then follow Ike Isaacs on Twitter. What's your Twitter again? Uh, Pine Size Beast. Yeah, yeah, at Pine Size Beast. Uh, flood him with pictures of Patrick Monahan from Train. He loves it. Put him in pretty hearts so he's his so he will swoon. 
Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So follow us on all the social media so you can see all the cool stuff we're doing. We're cool guys. We're a couple of cool dudes. We're cool, something. Cool dudes. We're something. We're something. Yeah, if you got any uh, questions, complaints, comments, suggestions, something you want us to talk about on air, hit us up. You can drop us an email at Dave Dynasty, Dave at DaveDynasty.com. Or you can message us through any of those social media. Well, we'll get it. Uh, let us know what you want us to talk about. Uh, don't forget, as you finish up your holiday shopping, hit LuchaMaskUSA.com for all your Lucha Libre needs. And go to DaveDynasty.com and go through our Amazon affiliate link. Uh, no additional charge to you. A little kickback for us as you order through Amazon. Help us out. A little bit of cash. Help us line. out. Uh, next week. Need beer money. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Somebody's got a fun wrestling and booze. But hey. If you are a brewer out there, get a hold of me. We will try your booze. We will try your beer uh, on Rest and Lose, and yeah. we'll, we'll plug, the, plug the hell out of you. So, uh, yeah, get with us. If, uh, if you like to home brew, hey, we'll, we'll drink your stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll take a chance. We'll be, we'll be your guinea pigs. So, so this is the part where like, we get some weird shit in the mail. It's like piss on a bottle. I, you know what? It'll make for interesting YouTube videos, won't it? Yeah, I, I guess. I'm you watch. Not... I'll just make sure you take the first drink every time. Is that right? Okay. That's what you're here for. That's why you're paid I'm, the big bucks. I'm, I'm literally the train. I'm literally the test monkey. You are. You are. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, hey, I'm not real sure what this <laughs> is. Drink it. <laughs> drink it, he man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I dropped into Skeletor. What was that? <laughs> I was, I was like, we, we, we phased out of like the Dave Dynasty into yeah, Skeletor. It was weird. Okay. Anyway, we're going to be, we got a couple interviews we're doing this week for our next two episodes. Uh, coming this week will be an interview with an old buddy of mine, Chris Caliber. You know him from, uh, hell, he's been doing it for a long time here in the Midwest, but most recently, a uh, big star in Emerge Wrestling, uh, New Era Wrestling, NWA Supreme. Uh, but he's getting out there, getting his word. He is one of the, the best talents you've probably not seen yet. Uh, so go see him, but check out our interview next week. We got lots of stories we'll trade because, like <laughs> I said, we, we go back 16, 17 years. It's gonna be like a couple old timers. When I was when I was your age, Ike, and he was just a kid. So anyway, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. And Ike's gonna be doing an interview with Corey Storm, uh, another a very young talent. He's what sixteen? He's fifteen, I believe. I don't think he's sixteen Shit. yet. Very young talent Can here I make out of the fun Midwest. No, you can't make fun of him. Why not? Because he's a guest. It was, We're I, not an I, asshole I, to I, guess. I thought you were gonna be like because he's a child. <laughs> <laughs> The old manser wouldn't old manser wouldn't hold back nothing against a child. When you're through those ropes, Mance does what he has to do to you. So whatever. But anyway, uh, yeah, Corey Storm, youngest man ever in the IWA Mid South Ted Petty Invitational Tournament. What a dude! He, he did pretty good though. Good young talent. But we'll have him on the week after. So we got two cool interviews coming up as it leads into the holidays. And uh, yeah, so that's that. I think we're done for this week. We've been blessed it. from wisdom from uh, carry off old Mance Warner. And we've been burdened by more bullshit from Mike Isaacs. I think we have had all we can take for one week. So to wrap this up, I don't even, don't even know comebacks. <laughs> to wrap this up for this week, I am your host, Dave Dynasty. And I'm your host, Ike Isaacs. Yeah, you are not. <laughs> your you're, producer, are you happy? I'm never happy <laughs> in your presence. Never. But it is what it is. I'm a beacon of light. Don't you, even lie to me. Yeah, okay. You, you're something. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. You know what? I'm filled with holiday cheer, but there's a limit <laughs> before I stick my stocking up your ass. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You saved that for you and, oh, yeah. you and your train buddy. That's it for this week of the Dave Dynasty Show. We will leave on that ne- on that sexual joke. About Ike Isaac and Patrick Monahan. Patrick Monahan, I know there is absolutely zero chance that you are fucking listening to this in the world, but if you are, Ike loves you. He hey, loves you bunches. Hey, if he wants to fund this, man, that's where we can get our. Beer Why money. would he fund this? I don't know. He might think it's funny. He might. Yeah, he would break your heart if he laughed at you. No, I'd be alright. You think Patrick Monahan's a closet wrestling fan? You know that I, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. You never know, I guess. Yeah. Never know, but I've, I don't know. Patrick <laughs> hey, anyways, Mon- Patrick Monahan, if you're out there. Give us money. <laughs> give us money. <laughs> screw the sponsor. Screw the Amazon link. Just give us money. Give us money. <laughs> I will pimp Ike Isaacs out to you. Although he would do it for free. Yes, I would. Oh, my. What have we turned into? Potter Ma- Monahan fan club. Uh, no, that's what you are. <laughs> Not I. Not I. <laughs> 
Anyway, I'm your host, Dave Dynasty. On behalf of the producer, Mr. Soul Sister himself, Ike Isaacs, we are out of here. See ya. Yeah.